Another promising finalist is Wales-based volunteer group The Green Valleys. The group is based in the Brecon Beacons, where the majority of the residents remain cut off from the mains gas supply and therefore rely on oil to heat their homes. Oil is not only more expensive than other fuels, it is also more polluting. According to residents, heating costs have risen by a staggering 400% over the past three years. What the Green Valleys group are aiming for, therefore, is a more eco-friendly energy generation. The group is trying to restore a series of hydroelectric systems built on the steep valley sides that were decommissioned when coal was readily available. So far, the volunteers have succeeded in bringing seven of these hydroelectric systems back to life. They hope to continue opening a further 50 to 300 plants over the next 20 years. With each plant producing 6 kilowatts, this will make a significant difference to the Brecon Beacon's current fuel situation. They don't harm the environment, they don't harm wildlife, they have almost no, they're almost invisible once they're, once they're established. Um, the, the benefit is just to reduce the carbon emissions of the community. We will, we will burn less fossil fuel as a community. And this is, if, if, if everyone, in one small community, perhaps that doesn't have a great impact. If we can do that right across the region, if we can do that across the country, then the impact is going to be felt for generations to come. Well, the new, the new hydroelectric plant will produce about between 16 and 18 kilowatt plant, so we'll, uh, which is enough for about uh, eight, ten households. And hopefully it'll be the first of quite a few in the valley, because the valley is very well situated because of its huge catchment area and its very steep size, which means we've got we don't have huge, we don't have vast quantities of water, but we do have a nominal amount of head, so we have very high water pressure at the bottom uh, for driving turbines. This turbine and these rooftops in the centre of London are at the heart of what the Big Green Challenge is hoping to achieve. With only two months to go until the winner is announced, the pressure is on for the organisers of these projects. But for these residents in King's Cross and the Brecon Beacons, the projects are clearly already success stories, regardless of the result. The key issue at the heart of climate change is the need for a viable alternative to fossil fuels. Sustainable and renewable energy solutions are vital if Copenhagen is to succeed and indeed, if we are to reduce the damage being done to our planet. One energy company that is trying to come up with a solution to this problem is Vattenfall. Vattenfall, owned by the Swedish state, is Europe's fifth largest generator of electricity, with operations across the continent. While focusing on renewable energy, the company is also looking at options to clean up coal. Carbon Capture and Storage, or CCS, is one such solution. Well, the CCS is an indispensable part of, of, of the solution as the world will not be able to survive the next 40, 50 years without fossil fuels. And of course, the climate won't take or can't take all those emissions, which simply means that we have to, through technical means, take those emissions away. And that is what CCS means. In February 2009, the official test program for carbon capture began at the Oxyfuel pilot plant at the Swartzer pump. The first results show a capture rate of around 90% with a very high CO2 purity. Carbon capture storage is a concept, it's a technological concept where you have, for example, a big emitter, a power plant, burned by coal or other fossil fuels, natural gas, hardcore or lignite, where you want to take away the CO2 from the flue gas, the exostars of the power plant, you want to transport it somewhere where you can safely store it permanently in the ground. So it's actually three parts of the process. It's the capture part, the transport part, and the storage part that we need to look at. As one of Europe's largest energy generators, Vattenfall bears a responsibility to help find the solutions to the energy crisis and is committed to curbing climate change. The company is aiming to be carbon neutral by 2050. As a result, it isn't just trying to clean up existing power plants, but also to invest in a number of alternative energy sources from hydro to solar. One such undertaking is a joint venture with Irish company WaveBob, focusing on the power of the oceans. So basically what we have to understand is that wave energy is uh, stored wind energy. So wind that has been blowing over the surface of uh, oceans for sometimes thousands of kilometers have slowly transmitted that energy in the air to uh, the motion of water, which we see as waves. 
And we try to capture the energy in those waves. And we do so by um, a device uh, called the wave pop. It basically consists of uh, two bodies uh, in the water, this uh, yellow big tank and this uh, brownish um, device on the top. And both um, bodies m behave differently uh, in, in the waves. WaveBob is the result of 10 years of research and development. It is only recently that Vattenfall joined forces to create a new company, Ton Energy. We think that if we can harvest a sufficient quantity, there's enough energy out here for Ireland to not only power its own homes, but to be a net exporter of green energy. Well, as you can see behind me, it's really an aggressive environment, so it takes a lot of time for the engineering, for the reliability, to put something out there that can survive. So it's taken a lot of years to perfect the, the devices, and it will continue to take more time before we can put full installation in the water. After several years of research and development, Ton Energy's efforts will come to fruition in 2012. Here, off the coast of West Ireland, will be the location for the first test model, one that is quarter of the size of the planned wave power generator. Ocean energy will become commercial within 10 years from now. It's still uh, not fully developed and we as a major utility company will do our part to make sure that the technology is developed. Well, the real importance is the potential it offers. It's probably one of the most, um, biggest opportunities we have if we can get the commercial technology right uh, to provide our own clean, secure power supply and indeed not just for Ireland but to power the rest of Europe. With the backing of the government, Vattenfall is in a good position to continue its efforts to harness the power of the waves. Well, the potential wave power is about the same as for wind power, so, so it will make a great contribution to the solution in climate change. Vattenfall believes that once perfected, ocean energy will play a big part in producing electricity, not only for the people of Ireland, but also for all of Europe. For Vattenfall, getting support from the local community is an important factor in its potential success. Well, this is a very exciting story from what we know so far. And of course, there are many unknowns uh, yet to be answered, uh, questions that will come to the fore as time goes on. But uh, because there's been a project in this area previously to do with energy and um, sensitive issues uh, have been raised, uh, I think a lot of people will be cautious enough when they uh, as the story develops and as they see it. But obviously it is going to have a great impact on this area where uh, infrastructure is concerned, where employment is concerned, and all the spin-off that comes from that. It seems that they want to get the people invo involved and on board at a very early star stage. Um, they will have public consultation, public meetings, um, which will be very important and it will be a key factor in, in getting public acceptance. The fact that this is a green technology means that, that it's easier to sell, I suppose, to the, to the um, public. If Vattenfall succeeds, Ireland could generate green electricity for Europe. Next week we travel to Germany, the US and Sweden to see how companies are coming up with ever more imaginative ways to cut carbon emissions and make money. Adopting green business practice does not necessarily mean reduced profits. My name is Flemick Webb. Thank you for watching.